So we're uh, recording this immediately after Stockyard. Um, here's Undertow. Uh, both maps I forgot to mention in the previous one. Stockyard and this were designed by Dario Casali. Just, you know, I'd feel remiss if I didn't point that out. Uh, definitely one of the more underplayed maps. I don't even know necessarily it's a bad map, but, like, to play in, like, real, like, server, like, you know, with real people, because I've never really played it at all. It just, it's one of those maps that kind of falls under the cracks. Um, it's, it's kind of like Lambda Bunker, but this one even more so. Um, I can't imagine it being bad, though, because, you know, Dario Caselli's track record for literal, like, the actual gameplay of a map is usually pretty good. But I do know a few th interesting things about it. I'll point them out. So this is another one of those uh, kind of trap-based maps, kind of like Stockyard. Um, except this one has one that's really effective if you know how to use it. I'll point it out. So here's the central area, which is uh, symmetrical in a way. Almost symmetrical. In fact, I think it literally is. Besides, yeah, I think it's symmetrical. Go figure. Um, and the thing is, on both sides, throughout the hallways of the map, you got these conveyor belts here that can... You make you go really fast down and like really mess with you in the heat of the moment if you're trying to move like avoid attacks So be careful You can get some windows you can use as shortcuts to jump out stuff like that. Here's that other entrance uh, It's not symmetrical map in the sense of as you can see here the hallways diverge and like you know where they go and stuff like that so it's really just this area right here and obviously the we'll start at the top of the map this uh, you can't, once you, like, you can ride this down throughout the whole map, the undertow itself, if you will. So if you go over here, this bottom area, the very back area, you got not much of note. A lot of the items are towards the bottom. That's not to say there isn't interesting stuff to find in the up here, though, because there's some explosives. Uh, this side, you got claymores, which, if you're good enough, you can actually chuck over there, so keep that in mind. You can go down here. This door at first doesn't look like it's going to open, but you'll see the secret to it in a second. So coming back this way, if you were to go this way first, the I believe there's claymores aside, not a satchels. If I called that a claymore earlier, I'm sorry, that's a satchel. Um, see this though, this is interesting though, because if you take the ladder up, you'll get to the top of this little machine, if you will. And it might not look obvious at first, but if you wait a quite a long time for the spinning thing to go all the way around, you can jump in and get the gauze here, which is always good. I mean, sorry, the Egon. Still getting that confused, and then you can get back out. And I do believe that is the only way out of the thing here. So I think it is possible to jump from here into the rundown. And you can have some interesting combat here. Uh, don't stick around too long. You can get an RPG. And you ideally want to keep moving because, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of people firing at you. I don't believe there's anything in note in the water. No. And then you get to the bottom of the map here, which I'll show off real quick. This is where all the interesting shit's at. Um, first, you got a hive hand there. You got this little area here that you can find and get a whole bunch of ammo. You can also get in from here, but, you know, there's an alternate if you need to. Going from there, this is a little bit confusing first time through. I'll show you where this elevator goes after. There's the that. Then you can go up in this side here. Get some nice grenade, uh, or, um, SMG grenades, always good. Get some ammo. Walk across here to get the shotgun, which it can be very effective though. You'll want to stay, you know, kind of on the edges here. So it's not quite as good as you'd hope for it on like a, a map that's kind of cramp but still it's good don't discount it get a crossbow snipe here or get back out and snipe over there just snipe get a long jump which is always real good and then there's this area where if you grab the rpgs from earlier you have a good way to dominate some people you can use a long jump to get up here which doesn't really have much besides the smg which i say that but then if you had the grenades from earlier it actually can be very effective so now, with all that said, let's check this out right here. That elevator to the top here. And I'm going to press this in a second because I want to show off what the rest of the map's like. This leads into the long corridor from earlier. And then there's this upper area, which I failed to point out earlier. Where you can get the revolver, which is a great sniper here or anywhere. Either here or the room. Regardless of which of those weapons you pick up, uh, use the sniper abilities here to your heart's consent. Especially in these long hallways, the sniper is better than the sniper weapons are better than you'd think. 
Especially if people aren't paying attention and they accidentally land on the conveyor belts and try to move. Really easy to pick them up. Pick them off, I should say. You can try to pick them up. I don't know how well that'll do for you, but still. Just wanted to see. I don't think I missed anything. Like I said, most of the action is in the bottom part here. Well, I say action, I mean items. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit tired. I kind of rushed into this. I apologize. So now I'll show you what happens though if you press this. Probably the most devious trap in the original eight multiplayer maps. Because this doesn't just last for a bit. This right here, I think, locks every single entrance. I, I the, the, in the in the bottom part, it doesn't lock do anything up there because you can still hear hear people firing. But once you're down down in this bottom area, you're basically screwed. Unless you know someone gets up here, of course. Although I think. Oh yeah, they probably spawned here. I think you can take the elevator up. So never mind, but you know, if you don't get out fast enough, you're gonna drown. So that might not be quite as evil. I swear it locked the part down there too, but I might be wrong. Shows how little I've played this map. And uh, yeah, you can, if you uh, that closes you, you can stay up there and snipe some people. So that's some fun stuff right there. And yeah, not much to say about it. Let's just give it a shot. I, oh yeah, if, this is actually, for once I forgot, the corridor here was over here. I forgot that there was another side to that, um, one area. Sorry about that. I don't know why they placed a shotgun here, though. It seems like a little bit of a goofy spot, but, you know, that's just my thinking. Shotgun would be good, really good here, especially with the bots here. They're not smart enough to figure out how to do any of this. Yeah. I wouldn't normally recommend firing a rocket launcher in a moving, like, river like this, but hey, you know, to each their own. Yeah, so you can get some insane... You can rack up some insane kills if you got the grenades for that here. Undertow is good. I like this map. And with that, I have uh, made a video on all eight of the original Half-Life Deathmatch maps. Now, if you're saying, what about Crossfire and Frenzy? Those are actually added in patches after. I will be talking about those too, but I wanted to do the original eight that came with the game in 1998. Just because I felt like it. Yeah. Um, more map videos soon. Yep.